Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Wars of Anatomy. Today we will see the dissection of a popliteal fossa. The popliteal fossa is a diamond shaped depression lies on the back of the knee and it is homologous with the cubital fossa of our upper limb. Now, the popliteal fossa, it is covered by the skin, superficial fascia and the deep fascia that will form its roof. Here I remove the skin and superficial fascia. Now in the superficial fascia of a popliteal fossa, we can see some important structure that is now in the superficial fascia in the roof, we can see one cutaneous vein that is small saphenous vein draining into the popliteal vein. Then on the medial side, we can see the me, uh, posterior division of a medial, medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. Along with the short saphenous vein, we can see the peroneal communicating nerve or a sural communicating nerve which arises from the uh, common peroneal nerve. And in the upper part of the fossa, one more cutaneous nerve which is not seen over here, that is the posterior cutaneous nerve of a thigh. So these are the important cutaneous structure lies in the roof of a popliteal fossa. Now I will remove the roof and see the boundary and the content of a popliteal fossa. Now we see the boundary of a popliteal fossa. This is a right popliteal fossa. This is a medial side. This is the lateral side of a fossa. So its superomedial boundary of a popliteal fossa is formed by the semitendinosus, semimembranosus muscle, and supplemented by the gracilis, sartorius, and adductor magnus muscle, supero-medial boundary. Superolateral boundary is formed by the biceps femoris muscle. Now inferiorly, inferomedial boundary is formed by the medial head of gastrocnemius, while the inferolateral boundary is formed by the lateral head of gastrocnemius and it is supplemented by a very thin muscle which is known as a plantaris. Now the floor of the popliteal fossa is formed by, here you can see the white structure that is a popliteal surface of the femur. Below it there is a capsule of a knee joint and the oblique popliteal ligament and in the most lower part the fascia covering the popliteus muscle. Okay? So this is a boundary of a popliteal fossa and it will make a diamond shape to this fossa. Now we move to the inside of the fossa, the content. The content of the popliteal fossa are the popliteal artery and its branches, popliteal vein and its tributaries, tibial nerve and its branches, common peroneal nerve and its branches, posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh, genicular branch of obturator nerve, popliteal group of lymph node and the fat. Okay? Now we see the major structure, major content of the popliteal fossa. See, this is a small saphenous vein. It is draining into the popliteal vein here. You can feel it. This is the popliteal vein. Okay. Now just medial to the popliteal vein in the upper part of the fossa, you will find the popliteal artery. So this is the popliteal artery, the popliteal vein. This is sciatic nerve, which is divided into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. Tibial nerve and the common peroneal. Now, first we see, we see the popliteal artery. Before that, the popliteal vessels, popliteal artery and the popliteal vein is entering into the popliteal fossa, back of the knee, by passing through the hiatus, the opening in the adductor magnus from the front of the thigh. So this is a hiatus through which the, both the vessels will pass from the front of the thigh to the back of a knee joint and become a popliteal vessel, right? Now we see the branches of a popliteal artery. The popliteal artery will give the muscular branches, cutaneous branches and the genicular. See the first, the muscular branches. In the upper part, here, you can see some branches, this one, are the muscular branches which supply the muscle of the back of the thigh, hamstring muscle, and it will anastomose with the fourth perforating artery, the muscular branches. 
the cutaneous branches either arise from the popliteal artery itself or from the muscular branches. Here we cannot see the cutaneous branches. Now the genicular artery, that is the articular branches. Genicular artery uh, branches are the medial and lateral superior genicular artery, then middle genicular artery and superior, uh, sorry, and inferior, uh, 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 inferior medial and lateral genicular artery. First we see the superior. Here you can see this one is a superior medial genicular artery which will go medially, winds around the medial condyle of a femur. This one, this has been called, is a lateral superior genicular artery which is going toward the lateral condyle of a uh, femur. Now the third branch, third genicular branch. The lies deep here. This one. This is a middle genicular artery which is going deeply. It will pierce the oblique popliteal ligament and it will supply the structure of a knee joint inside the knee joint, cruciate ligament and meniscus and synovial member. So this is the middle genicular artery. Now in the inferior part. The popliteal artery again gives the two genicular branches. This one is a inferior medial genicular artery. See, inferior medial genicular artery and the inferior lateral genicular artery. This will pass below the muscle of the back of the leg and winds around the uh, corresponding condyle of the tibia. So all this upper and the lower two genicular branches will wind around the femur and the tibia and front in front it will make an anastomosis around the knee joint. So this is about the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery is accompanied by the popliteal vein and its tributary. Now the laterally in the upper part there is a tibial nerve. See this tibial nerve will also give the genicular branchy, branches that is a superior medial, middle and the inferior medial genicular branches. Here. Uh, uh, we cannot see the genicular branches. The next, the cutaneous branch. The cutaneous branch of the tibial now will it is called a sural now, which accompany this is the sural now which accompany the short saphenous vein. This is the short saphenous vein which is accompanied by the sural now branch of the cutaneous branch of the tibial now. And the last the muscular branches. In the popliteal fossa, tibial now give the muscular branches to the muscle of the back of the leg that is a medial head, let, uh, medial head, lateral head of a gastrocnemius, plantaris, soleus and the popliteus. Here you can see this branch of a tibial nerve is supplying the medial head of gastrocnemius. Then this branch, this is muscular branch supplying the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. This is going deeply which is supplying the popliteus and the soleus. Okay. So these are some muscular branches. Here also one deep branch that is a popliteus. Now to the popliteus. The branches, muscular branches of the tibial. Now the fourth important contain the common peroneal nerve. It is a branch of a sciatic nerve. The common peroneal nerve will run uh, along a uh, superolateral boundary of the popliteal fossa, along the medial border of a biceps femoris. Okay? It will give the cutaneous branch that is a peroneal communicating nerve and soon it will wind around the nape of the fibula. Here you can see, the, you can feel the upper end of the fibula. It will wind around the nape of the fibula here and it will soon divide it into the superficial and the deep peroneal nerve. The superficial peroneal nerve will pass laterally between the peroneus longus and the previous. The deep peroneal nerve is going anteriorly, supply the, all the muscle of the anterior compartment of a leg. Okay. So this is uh, about the popliteal fossa. Thank you. If you like this video, like it and share with your friends. And to get the regular update on the anatomy videos, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.